I would like to thank each and every one of you for attending this Breaking News Workshop. It's, uh, the Breaking News Workshops is something new that we started uh, last year and we initiated the, the, uh, the series with uh, Dr. Alan Carroll and his research colleagues and they talked an awful lot about the, the modeling that they were doing on the efficacies of, uh, of, um, of the department's um, efforts to control and manage the beetle. And of course, a, a good portion of that uh, presentation was about the spread model that they, they had developed, and they were making excellent progress on it. So it was a delight to have Alan and his colleagues talk about that. And it's that type of topic that we don't often get direct, in, uh, um, direct information from the researchers. So the many people that attended, there were well over 50 people that attended that workshop, and it, sometimes there was just standing room only. And so we are continuing that, uh, the series of breaking news workshops with, uh, with this one, with Dr. Axel Anderson. And it's all about uh, mountain pine beetle and hydrology and the impacts uh, on, the, on the landscape. And one of the focuses that we are uh, intending to bring out through this uh, workshop and the discussions that we will have is about how this information can be incorporated into, into management planning or at least allude to what you can do as a planner or as a forester, as a biologist, and whatever capacity you have as a resource manager, how you can use this information to, to um, uh, make decisions, develop operational uh, activities to function in, in the future amidst the, uh, the mountain pine beetle and the impact that it's having on our landscapes. It's, uh, it's also very timely in a way to, to have this workshop and I just want to make note that uh, this year is the 25th anniversary of FRI research. And for some of you that have been in the neighborhood for the last 25 years, you'll know that FRI research had its uh, beginnings as the Foothills Forest as part of the Model Forest Program. And over the past 25 years, the, the, uh, the Institute, uh, the corporation now, has, um, has done amazing things. It's developed uh, uh, world-renowned uh, uh, programs, grizzly bear research, the water program. And, and uh, the main focus of all of the programs has been to inform land, and ma land management decisions. And it's, it's, it's interesting because I've been involved with the Model Forest Program since it was initiated in 1992. I am assuming everybody was born by then. Raise your hand if you weren't. Because <laughs> I, okay, Richard, you weren't. Um, so here we are, years later, after the program started, and Foothills Forest started actually uh, undertaking individual projects or research programs. Well, over the years, we have seen a convergence of these programs into a well-integrated organization that is looking to adopt information from various uh, programs and use it as, a, um, as an amalgam to influence resource and land management planning. And I think we're doing a reasonably good job at this because no one else is doing it. And I must say that when I say we, I, I, that is the broad we. And we just happen to be a, a face to a lot of the work that's going on that's contributed to by the universities, uh, not only in, in Alberta here, University of Alberta particularly, but also the University of British Columbia, University of Northern British Columbia, uh, in Saskatchewan as well. Um, it's, it's been a really an amazing um, adventure uh, for us. And we're just hoping that you will see the benefits of attending workshops like this and take home information that you might be able to apply in your own daily activities. And if you don't remember anything, we're on the web, give us a call. Uh, any one of us here can, um, that's associated with FRI research can uh, certainly answer any of your questions. And we also have a number of board members here. There's uh, Gordon, uh, Gordon Sanders and who else is on the board here? Um, Oh yeah, and Richard Brianne, and certainly uh, Ryan too, our general manager is here, and, and Ellen McDonald. And so we're, we're all available uh, for you to ask uh, any type of question that you have, whether it's particularly about uh, the 
hydrology workshop today or any other topic or other research that we undertake at uh, FRI Research. So let me just uh, carry on by just giving you a little bit of background on the mountain pine beetle program. Um, again, I, you know, the, the mountain pine beetle program is really all about providing information for, to influence decision and operational, um, um, no, to influence operational decisions and, and support policy development. And it's been a, a very, um, it's been a very diverse project in a sense that we had so many information needs from the time that the mountain pine beetle started to, to enter into Alberta. Um, what we had available to us was the information that was accumulated in British Columbia. But many would say, many of the scientists would say that not all that information is directly applicable to Alberta conditions. So we need to revisit a lot of the important research questions. And in doing that, the Mount Pine Beetle Program developed uh, theme areas, research theme areas. And these are the four areas that we adopted. Um, mountain pine beetle biology and management, hydrological impacts of the mountain pine beetle, which is what we're going to focus on today, the dynamics of natural and managed uh, lodgepole pine stands following mountain pine beetle, and social economic implications of a changing landscape. Now, even though these themes look separate, they're highly integrated. Because when we talk about biology, where we're talking about management and control, understanding the beetle and how it operates in our stands. When we talk about hydrological impacts, that's a, that's a change on the landscape as a result of the beetle. And that, again, will influence how new stands or uh, our damaged landscapes are going to revegetate to a desirable end result, whether it's a, a, a commercial forest or whether it's another type of uh, vegetation type that we're we're looking at from a social perspective, but we're also looking at the social aspects. What are the social impacts of the mountain pine beetle in, in, uh, in Alberta? And so we are focusing in this particular uh, research theme area on community resiliency. And if you're in a community or in a community that has, has been devastated in, 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 by the mountain pine beetle through the loss of their forest, or you anticipate losses to your forest. Community resiliency, what is it? And so we have a uh, professor from the University of British Columbia, the Okanagan campus, Lael Parrott, who is looking at this in a very uh, detailed way. And um, she's making excellent progress in that regard. Oops. Oh, sorry. So this is the hydrological impacts of, uh, of Mount Pine Beetle. And in the particular research themes that we have, and they're listed on this banner to my left, your right, um, within each theme there are critical questions that we are using to direct and identify types of uh, research projects that um, the FRI research would like to support because the information that is derived from the research projects, again, goes into influencing operational decision-making and influencing policy. So these are the two questions that uh, particularly we are uh, very interested in. And, um, and also, these are the, the, the projects that we are undertaking right now in the, under the research theme of hydrological impacts of mountain pine beetle. So one of the uh, focuses of FRI research is to make sure that we disseminate our results. And again, this uh, breaking news workshop is one of the important ways that the Mountain Pine Beetle Ecology Program has in communicating results to you. Uh, we also have the FRI website, and um, and then more uh, annually we have a very large research forum that typically takes place at the end of uh, April of each year, and one is coming up this coming April. And this is normally a two-day workshop. A, a couple of years ago, we had a, um, a field trip attached in the Grand Prairie area where um, Ellen's work on the, um, on the um, Beyond Beetle project was highlighted along with Derek Sitter's work on an operational, uh, very large operational trial. And so we were able to see firsthand what is happening, what kind of responses we're getting through various operational activities. 
And so this, this workshop, this breaking news workshop, is really for practitioners, scientists, students. We, we, we particularly uh, like our students here because they, they carry a large burden of, of uh, effort in the, in the field. Julie Stenke can attest to that, and so can Amy. You know, there's, there's a lot of, lot of good work uh, that uh, students do, and um, so we like to give them the opportunity to convey that information to us.